I taught in and was an administrator at a local detention education program and core operated day school for 16 years. This is important because I experienced firsthand the students, the classroom, and the setting that I'm about to describe. And as an administrator, I coached and I observed teachers trying to figure it out. How do you effectively teach in a confinement education program? And how does the skill set differ from both your previous teaching experience, which was probably the public school setting, and your formal teaching training, which was from the colleges and universities? My name is Carol Kramer Brooks, currently as the director of OJJDP's National Center for Youth in Custody and the CEO of the National Partnership for Juvenile Services. I work with educators from all over the country who teach in confinement facilities and who remind me daily about the importance of getting this right now. For the sake of the student who we may only see for a couple of days, but also for the sake of the educator, who if we get it right, will, like me, have the teaching opportunity of their lifetime. For those of you currently teaching in this environment, you certainly will recognize the students I'm about to describe. For those of you new to teaching or new to this environment, let me take just a couple of minutes to describe the typical student. Occasionally, you will get the student who will have highly advanced skills, will be functioning at or about grade level, on track to graduate. You have to be ready for this student because you are as obligated to teach to, to challenge, to promote the growth of this student as you are to all of your other students, which means that you are going to have to be ready to provide instruction in calculus and in physics and in French and in government. But more often, you will have students that present differing levels of academic readiness, typically below and significantly below grade level, coupled with differing levels of social and emotional maturity at vast chronological age spans, all in one classroom you will have students who have differing levels of ability to think critically, analytically, and to understand complex ideas. You will have students who learn at all different rates of speed. You will have students who bring in different um, levels of motivation. And what complicates it even further is that you, this will change every day for you because your students change every day. And so this will require you to um, be flexible on the fly, to be, you know, ultra creative, and to always be able to be very skillful at differentiated instruction because just at the time when you think you have your student groups all set and just when you think you have the patterns of instruction where you can maximize the, your effectiveness in the classroom, everything changes and the dynamics in the classroom change. Many of you will teach in environments where you will have limited special education service delivery options. And you will be the only one in your facility providing special education services to the increasing numbers of students who are eligible for those special education services. But now you may be saying to me, Carol, you're really describing the plight of every teacher in any school public, private, confinement. And I say to you, 
you are absolutely right. Because you know what? It isn't the individual student profile that defines the unique characteristics of a confinement education program and that challenges the confinement educator. What it is, it's the individual student profile coupled with the classroom profiles and the environments. So we have to look a little deeper at what makes us and sets us apart from our public school counterparts. Nationally, the average length of stay in a short-term detention education program is 17 days. Now, this is an average. So we have students in our education programs that stay for two days, that stay for three days, that stay for 20 days, and that stay for a whole lot longer, and the educator rarely knows which it's going to be. So confinement educators, and specifically short-term detention educators, have to plan units, lessons, and delivery of instruction a whole lot different. Students in confinement education programs typically attend classes based on their, or with their living unit groups. They don't get placed into their classes based on their academic needs. So it's quite well possible, if you're the math teacher, that you have st a student who needs calculus sitting next to a student who's doing basic addition and subtraction. Or you could be the language arts teacher and you have a non-reader and students who are tackling Shakespeare all in one classroom at one time. In the public school setting, the rate of students who are eligible for special education services is approximately 11% of, of the student population. In confinement education programs, the prevalence rate ranges anywhere from 30 to 75%. So not only is the number of special education students a lot higher, but the special education support services in a confinement education program is a lot less. We typically have maybe one teacher. In addition, you frequently have difficulty accessing student records. So you may not even know if a student is eligible for special education services. Or if you are able to get special education records, the chances are that the IEP that you may have for that student is so outdated often as a result of huge gaps in educational services that our students present. Finally, um, unlike our public school settings, where most of the activities that happen in the public school are education-related activities, in a confinement setting, education is not the priority. Many other things take priority over the education program. For example, the uncertainty of the pending court case, separation or removal from family, friends, community, court-ordered restitution, appointments, services that the, that the youth has to get done before they can be released. Um, and then the catch-all, safety and security, which trumps everything, certainly education issues. So, these are your choices every day. These are your students, these are your, this is your classroom, this is your setting. You still, as the teacher, have to challenge your students and provide for substantial growth in their academic process. How you choose to do that, how you choose to develop your own skills to create and instill hope, 
to dispel the fears of learning, to unleash the potential in, in our kids, to create creative and curious learners. It reminds me of a quote from a national award winner of a teacher of the year. He said, it's a teacher's responsibility to each and every day, each and every child. You have the power, the passion, the skill, and the knowledge to make a difference each and every day, each and every child. I hope every teacher in our confinement facilities believes that. 